Turn your Bibles to John chapter 8. The book of John chapter 8. We are going to begin reading in verse 32. Verse 32. The title of my message. The Talmud, Chabadism, and Noahide Law. The Talmud, Chabadism, and Noahide Law. Verse 32, John chapter 8. Jesus said, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The only thing that will make you free is the truth. Every falsehood comes with a certain degree of bondage. Every falsehood. Religious falsehood is no exception. There are many, many, many millions of professing Christians who are as much in bondage as are people who do not profess to be Christians. Because they are being taught and they believe erroneous doctrine. All error comes with a certain degree of bondage. The only way we can be truly set free is by the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He is speaking to the Pharisees, the scribes, the elders, the Sanhedrin of Jerusalem. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. Pause. What a joke. At that very moment, they were living in bondage to the Roman Empire. And yet they have the audacity to say to Jesus, we were never in bondage to any man. How many times had the children of Israel been put into bondage as the judgment of God for their wickedness over the centuries? Can anybody remember the Assyrian captivity? What about the Babylonian captivity? What about the Chaldean captivity? What about all the times that you were brought into bondage by the enemies of Israel because of your disobedience? We were never in bondage. This shows you the depth of ignorance and the depth of deceit that people who have rejected truth will plunge into. There is no limit to the depth of deception and ignorance from people who reject truth. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Now, I've got to take a pause here on this verse. This verse is not saying that as a, as a true born-again child of God that we will not sin. In this flesh, we sin every day, even though we are Christians. We have not received our sinless, glorified bodies yet. There's coming a day, thank God, 
when we will cast this body of clay aside and we will take a glorified, sinless body. Until then, in this flesh, even Christians sin. Jesus is not teaching th that we would never sin. And if you get around a fella who claims that he's sinless, you can know two things. You can know, number one, he's a liar, and number two, he's the biggest hypocrite in the world. Here's what John Gill said about this passage. This is to be understood of such whose bias and bent of their minds are to sin, who give up themselves unto it and sell themselves to work wickedness, who make sin their trade, their business, and their employment, and are properly workers of it, and take delight and pleasure in it. These, whatever liberty they promise themselves, are the servants of corruption. They are under the government of sin that has dominion over them, and they obey it in the lusts thereof, and are drudges and slaves unto it, and will have no other wage at last but death, even eternal death. That is exactly what Jesus is saying in this passage. Verse 35, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Gill writes this on verse 36. This is true freedom. What the Jews boasted of, supposing that they said was right, was but a shadow of freedom in comparison of this. And that liberty which sinful men promised themselves in sin is all deceit. There is no true, solid, substantial freedom but the freedom that is in Christ, the Son of God. Amen and amen. Even that freedom which the children of God had under the Mosaic dispensation was a servitude in comparison of that which the saints enjoy by Christ under the gospel dispensation. Hear, hear, John Gill. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, Jesus said, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. A slap against Jesus' birth. They believed him to be born out of a illicit sexual relationship with another woman, they did not accept his virgin birth. So they are accusing him of being a bastard child. That was their way of saying it. It was a snide, insulting, blasphemous remark that they make to the Lord Jesus. We were not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. Jesus said unto them, look at these next few verses very carefully. God 
if God were your father, underline that, if God were your father, ye would love me. If God were your father, ye would love me. Pause. Anyone who doesn't love the Lord Jesus Christ, God is not their father. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye, ye Pharisees, scribes, elders, chief priests, ye are of your father the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh, he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. The two chief character traits of Satan are his love of lying and his love of killing. Those are the two chief character traits of the devil. Everything he does involves deceit and death. And because I tell you the truth, Ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Verse 57, then said the Jews unto him, thou art not 50 years of age, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then, the, then took they up stones, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. That exchange between the Lord Jesus and the Pharisees, scribes, and so forth, summarizes the great battle that is being waged today. The Jewish Pharisees, scribes, rabbis, elders, and priests were the great enemies of Jesus Christ. It was they who led the Jewish people to crucify Christ and persecute and kill his apostles. The Sanhedrin was the governing council of these men and of the Jewish nation. Here is Albert Barnes' summary of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was instituted in the time of the Maccabees probably about 200 years before Christ. It was composed of 72 judges. The high priest was the president of this tribunal. The 72 members were made up 
of the chief priests and elders of the people and the scribes. The chief priests were such as had discharged the office of the high priest and those who were the heads of the 24 classes of priests who were called in an honorary way high or chief priests. The elders were the princes of the tribes or heads of the family associations. It is not to be supposed that all the elders had a right to, to seat here, but such only as were elected to the office. The scribes were learned people of the nation elected to this tribunal, being neither of the rank of priests or elders. This tribunal had cognizance of the great affairs of the nation. Until the time when Judea was subjected to the Romans, it had the power of life and death. It still retained the power of passing sentence, though the Roman magistrate held the right of execution. It usually sat in Jerusalem, in a room near the temple. It was before this tribunal that our Savior was tried. It was the Sanhedrin who tried him unjustly and illegally, I might add. It was the Sanhedrin that convicted him and sentenced him to death per the approbation of the Roman government. The counterfeit state of Israel, created in 1948, was created to be the catalyst for a global new world order based upon both religious and political tyranny. The seat of the new world order is Israel. Chabadist Jews are attempting to establish a global religious state. Zionist Jews are attempting to create a global political state. Most Christians today are not even aware that the counterfeit state of Israel has re-established the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is alive in Jerusalem today. The average Christian is totally ignorant of this fact. The Sanhedrin's goal is to replace the United Nations, pause. In my view, the United Nations doesn't need to be replaced, it needs to be displaced. Yeah. <clears throat> But the Sanhedrin's goal is to replace the United Nations with its own creation. And it's called the Organization of 70 Nations. Side note. The UN was created October 24, 1945. The UN was created to create the state of Israel. The initial purpose of the creation of the, of the United Nations was to create the state of Israel, which it did. The UN created the Zionist state of Israel on May 14, 1948. God didn't create the Zionist State of Israel, the United, the godless United Nations created the Zionist State of Israel. <laughs> Almost immediately after its creation, however, the State of Israel began to attack its Arab neighbors in order to expand its territory. Almost immediately, it set out to wage war against its Arab nations, ignoring the boundaries set to it by the UN when it was created 
in an attempt to expand its borders, which it did and which it continues to do to this very day. It has been in a state of war and genocide against its Arab neighbors ever since. Israel's aggressions and hostilities turned many of the world's nations against it until, as is the case today, the world's nations assembled at the UN often vehemently oppose Israel's ambitions. Israel brought this on itself. Now with control of the Western news media and with the assistance of bewitched evangelical Christians, Zionist Israel feels emboldened to attempt to circumvent the influence of the UN by creating this new organization of 70 nations, and that's what they call it, which is being founded on the Noahide laws. Now we're going to talk about this today because the vast majority of Christians know nothing about the Organization of Seventy Nations. They know nothing about Noahide laws. They are willfully ignorant because they are so indoctrinated and propagandized by this Christian Zionist philosophy that they refuse to even look at anything that might be considered negative toward the state of Israel. And as such, they are in a perpetual state of permanent blindness. I'm going to be quoting now from a, a rabidly pro-Israel site that's giving us this information, of course, in glowing terms in the way it's presented. It's called Breaking Israel News. I want to keep an eye on that. You'll get all the latest stuff coming out of, out of Israel regarding what I'm talking about. On September 25th, this was posted about a week ago. On September 25th, that's this Wednesday, right? This Wednesday, the 500, the 5,780th anniversary of the day on which Jewish tradition holds the world was created. The Sanhedrin is holding a conference for the emerging organization of 70 nations. The conference will culminate, are you, with, are you listening to me? The conference will culminate in an animal sacrifice made by representative of the representatives plural of the nations on the mount of olives in which they will renew the covenant made by noah upon leaving the ark they are reintroducing animal sacrifices they the sanhedrin this week Still quoting. The conference will begin on Wednesday evening, September 25, the 25th day of the Hebrew month of Elo, at the Jerusalem Gate Hotel, and continue until Friday, September 27. Lectures and discussions will focus on the Noahide obligations incumbent upon all of mankind. Listen to this next statement. A major focus will also be the establishment of an international court based on Bible. And when they say Bible, they mean mosaic principles. A major focus will be the establishment of an international court based on mosaic principles. By the way, they take the number 70 from the 70 grandsons of Noah. Rabbi Hollander 
Quote, This is clearly true in the Noahide law to establish courts of law. I've already explained to you in message previous, if you get the, the series, the Israel packages, packages, two of them, 22 messages, you'll hear me discuss this. Under Talmudic law, there's almost no such thing as a legislature. The judiciary makes and enforces the laws of the nation. It is run almost exclusively by a judiciary, not a legislative branch of government. This is clearly true in the Noahide law to establish courts of law. All of the laws are required by a nation, not by an individual. An international or multinational organization needs to establish the basics required for the survival of civilization. You keep hearing, do you hear these words? International, multinational. That's why I'm telling you, global government, the new world order, call it whatever you want, is headquartered in Israel. They are all about international government, international law. As part of the conference, quoting again, the representatives of the various nations will visit the Temple Mount and pay an official visit to the Knesset with the Sanhedrin. This is all being driven by the Sanhedrin. Quoting, on Friday the conference will culminate in a trip to the Mount of Olives where the nations will be invited to reenact the ceremony first performed by Noah upon exiting the ark, the sacrifice of animals. Quoting, the altar must be built and the sacrifice must be made by someone from the nations who keeps the seven Noahide laws. They must embrace, accept, pledge loyalty to the Noahide laws of the Sanhedrin. Quoting, the establishment of the modern state of Israel began the process, oops, skip the paragraph, let me go back. Another purpose of the conference and the organization of 70 nations is to begin the return of the lost 10 tribes of Israel. I, I have a news flash for you. All 12 tribes of Israel are lost. <laughs> These people who call themselves Jews today could not, if their life depended on it, prove their lineage. They could not prove they are from one of the 12 tribes of Israel and even more, they could not prove which tribe they were from. The time of the Lord Jesus and the early church before the destruction of Jerusalem. The two tribes which composed the southern kingdom, Judah, the larger of the two, and Benjamin, the smaller of the two, formed what is called 
the southern kingdom, or Judah. Israel was the northern kingdom where the ten tribes were. The southern kingdom was the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin called Judah because it was the largest of the two nations, two tribes. During the time of Christ, it was the southern kingdom that was still living in Judea. The northern kingdoms had been dispersed through the, the various captivities and persecutions. The Judahites were the ones still living in Judea. When you see the word Jew or Jews in the New Testament, that's the English variation, what it's referring to are those Israelites from the southern kingdom, Judah, that were Judahites. So if you remember that, when you, when you read that word Jew in our King James Bible, it's Judahite, the southern kingdom. And so this lost ten tribe thing has been going on for a long time. But the fact is, and I told you this earlier, when Herod was king in a jealous rage, he ordered that all of the genealogical records of the Jews be destroyed. For centuries dating back to the earliest days of the Old Testament, the Jewish people kept meticulous records of their ancestry. It was all written down, documented, and preserved in these scrolls that were preserved in Jerusalem. They were religiously preserved. Herod ordered the destruction, the burning of all of these records. This was after Luke had given us the chronologies of Christ and Matthew one from the line of Adam, one from the line of Abraham, one through Mary, one through Joseph. You remember that? Luke 1, Matthew 1. No doubt Matthew and Luke went to those scrolls that were preserved, the record, and were able to trace the genealogy of Joseph and Mary from those records. And that's how all of the Jewish people and their families were able to trace their ancestry. After Herod burned the genealogical records, the only thing the people of Israel had to cite their ancestral record was from memory. Then A.D. 70 comes along, Rome totally and thoroughly destroys, and that's the message that we're talking about, the destruction of Jerusalem that I preached a few weeks ago that I'm urging everyone to get, destroyed the temple in its entirety, the city, and all of the Judahites living in Jerusalem. So the clearest, or should I say maybe the latest recollections of the genealogical records in the minds of those people, all of those people were killed. So then it came to their ancestors, their, I mean their, their posterity, to try and, in their mind, recall 
their genealogy. So over the generations, the genealogical reality of the Judahites, as well as any of the other tribes, were totally expunged to the point that today there is not a professing Jew alive that could actually prove his genealogy and his ancestry. Not one. The establishment, quoting, of the modern state of Israel began the process of the ingathering of the exiles, Rabbi Weiss explained. The 70 Nations Initiative began last year at the World Creation Concert when high-ranking delegations from Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico signed a declaration saying, all right, here is the declaration, upon which this international 70 nations, organization of 70 nations, is predicated. Guatemala, Honduras, and Mexico. Keep, keep that in mind. We, as representatives of our nations, declare that according to the laws of Torah that God gave to Moses at Mount Sinai, and according to the prophets of Israel and all the books of the Bible, not including the New Testament, of course, because to Zionists and their ilk, the Bible only means the Torah, which means the Talmud. When Zionists speak of the Torah, they're always speaking of the Talmud, which, which means the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament written by Moses, and the writings of the Talmudic rabbis passed down through oral tradition. Oral tradition, which became the seed of the Talmud that was supposed to write down all the stuff that people had been passing on through word of mouth. You understand that, right? Yeah. Okay. We as representatives of our nation declare that according to the laws of Torah that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai and according to the prophets of Israel and all the books of the Bible, Torah and Talmud, we wish to accompany the people of God, the people of Israel, to the place chosen by God, the temple on Mount Moriah, the place of the binding of Isaac. The temple has been forever destroyed by God in 70 AD. There is no temple. Quoting all this in order to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as it is written, that my house will be called a house of prayer to all peoples, adding to scripture, by the way, we are all gathered together in the name of peace and love. Oh, don't you feel good? <laughs> With the people of Israel in the courtyards of the house of God, sorry, the house of God exists today in the bodies of the believers of Jesus Christ, Jew and Gentile. That's the house of God. House is God and not a building. It is the body of believers. As the sages of Israel and to fulfill the messianic vision of peace. Wait, sorry. The Messiah already fulfilled the messianic vision of peace. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. He is the Messiah. God blessed Abraham by saying, this is a 
Talmudic Zionist Jewish document, God bless Abraham by saying that they will bless you They that bless you, Israel, will be blessed. We pray that by blessing Israel today, we in turn will be blessed. Gee, does that sound familiar? Many of you heard that in your church last Sunday by your Christian Zionist false preacher. Where'd that come from? Straight out of the Sanhedrin. Quoting again, an international court will sit in Jerusalem and judge according to the important and recognized laws of the Bible. And again, that's the Jewish Bible, the Torah and Talmud. An international court in Jerusalem according to the important and recognized laws of the Torah and Talmud. Quoting again, all members of the organization, states, nations, ethnic groups, tribes, will have a seat and equal voting powers in the court of law, condition, as long as as they accompany the people of Israel as it appears in the covenant composed by the Sanhedrin in 2018. You can have a seat and voting power as long as you submit to the laws of the Sanhedrin. Quoting, all members of the organization will cooperate in building the temple on Mount Moriah and they can visit it as they choose after it's built. Close quote. All of that is happening in Jerusalem this week. Are you aware... Are you aware that our Congress of the United States has passed Noahide laws? Did you know that? I bet most of you didn't know that. The year was 1991, March 20. Let me read Public Law 102-14 passed by both chambers, of Cong both chambers of Congress, signed by the President. Here is that public law passed by Congress in 1991. Whereas these ethical values and principles, no hide laws, I skipped some of the beginning, jumbo, mumbo jumbo, Whereas these ethical values and principles have been the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization, really? The Talmud, which means the Jewish rabbis, through oral tradition, manufactured the Noahide laws out of thin air. They didn't come from the Bible. They didn't come from God. They came from the Jewish rabbis who wrote the Talmud. But our Congress said that the Noahide laws form the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization when they were known as the seven Noahide laws. I'm, I'm quoting. Whereas the Lubavitch movement, that's the founder, the rabbi who founded this movement, 
Whereas the Lubavitch movement has fostered and promoted these ethical values and principles throughout the world, whereas Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, leader of the Lubavitch movement, is universally respected and revered and is his 89th birthday falls on March 26, 1991, whereas in tribute to this great spiritual leader, leader, the rabbi, this, his 90th year, will be seen as one of education and giving, the year in which we turn to education and charity to return the world to the moral and ethical values contained in the seven Noahide laws. And whereas, this will be reflected in an international scroll of honor signed by the President of the United States and other heads of state. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled that March 26, 1991, the start of the 90th year of Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, leader of the worldwide Lupovich movement, is designed as Education Day USA. The president is requested to issue a proclamation calling upon the people of the United States to observe such day with appropriate ceremonies and activities. Close quote. Every president since Jimmy Carter in 1978, including Donald Trump, has signed this public law installing Noahide laws and Shabbatism in the United States. Every single president, Democrat or Republican, since 1978 has signed this document instituting Noahide laws and Shabbatism in America. Here's some things you need to know. Jewish Noahide law calls for the death of anyone practicing idolatry, blasphemy, pause. What was the charge the Sanhedrin brought against Jesus? Blasphemy. According to Shabbatism, every Gentile commits idolatry, no matter what his form of worship, unless he converts to Judaism. And anyone who worships Jesus Christ is not only an idolater, but is a blasphemer. Under Noahide law, every such person is condemned to death. Sexual immorality, according to Talmudic law, I'm not even, I don't even have time to get in to the utter ridiculousness and hypocrisy of Talmudic law relative to sexual immorality. The bottom line is, if you're a Chabadist, it's almost impossible to commit sexual immorality. And if you're not a Chabadist, then anything you do sexually is immoral in their eyes because you're nothing but an animal, undeserving of the blessing of God. Stealing, again, this is what death, the death sentence covers. Stealing, pause, from Jews. If you steal from Jews, you are guilty of death. But if you steal from Goyim, or if Jews steal from Goyim, there's no wrong in that. It's actually encouraged in the Talmud for Talmudic Jews to steal from the Goyim. Gentiles, there's no harm, no crime, no sin in it. It also obligates non-Jews to set up courts to carry out these Talmudic executions. 
So we're talking about a Jewish theocracy enforcing its laws through the sentence of death upon anyone who would not comply. Rabbi Schneerson, whose birth is commemorated in the congressional document we just read, stated that according to the Jewish law, non-Jews have no other purpose than to serve Jews who are the reason for creation. That is the job of the Gentile, is to serve the Jews, according to the founder of Chabadism. Trump's daughter, Ivanka, is a high-ranking Chabad Lupovich cultist, as is her husband, Jared Kushner. She prays at Rabbi Schneerson's grave regularly, has been blessed by rabbis who demand non-Jews goy follow the Noahide laws and refer to them as animals. That's a quote. President Donald Trump marked 11 Nisan, March 27, 2018, the birthday of the Lubavitcher rabbi by issuing a declaration proclaiming the Day of Education and Sharing Day USA. So just last year, Donald Trump continued the presidential tradition. Let's be clear. Noahide laws come from the Talmud, not the Bible. You cannot find anywhere in the life of Noah where there was any such prayer, statement, covenant, or whatever made between Noah and God relative to the Noahide laws. They do not exist in the Bible. This brings us to a name that if you don't know, you need to become familiar with, a 12th century Jewish rabbi by the name of Maimonides. Tell me you know who Maimonides is, right? 12th century Jewish rabbi. His writings are regarded as canonical to the Talmud. In other words, Shabbatist Jews believe that Maimonides' writings are equal in inspiration to the Talmud itself. He wrote extensively about the Talmud. By the way, Maimonides is Ben Shapiro's hero and biggest personal influence. You cannot listen to Ben Shapiro very long without him quoting from Maimonides. He quotes from him constantly. In his interpretation of the Mishnah, Talmud, Maimonides wrote, Know that this Christian nation, who are making the claims of a Messiah with all their many different sects, S-E-C-T-S, are all idol worshipers and all their holidays are forbidden and we deal with them regarding religious issues as we would pagans. So in the, in the mind, in the heart of Maimonides and the Chabadist followers, all Christians are pagans. And then he adds, Therefore, one must know that in every one of the Christian nation's cities, which has an altar, meaning a house of worship, it is a pagan house of idolatry without any doubt. And then one more quote from Maimonides. He said, The Christians are idol worshipers, and Sunday is their religious holiday. Therefore, we may not trade with them on Thursday and Friday of every week, and needless to say on Sunday, which is forbidden for trade with Christians everywhere. Now you need to understand, this, this is going to make so much sense to you when, you when you hear this. So we can't trade with Christians on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. And it's not against Talmudic law to steal from Goyim.
betrayed in this context refers to paying back loans which would enhance the joy of their day of their idol, meaning Jesus. Talking about trade, not paying. You don't, don't pay back the debts you owe to the goyim. They're pagans. They're idolaters. You should not trade with them. You should not, and if you do, don't pay back any loan. Are you, are you listening? As a closet Kabbalist, Donald Trump follows the laws of Maimonides by constantly not paying back loans and investments given to him. He, he declared bankruptcy seven times. He was following the doctrines of the Chabadist. He was following the teaching of Maimonides to not pay back loans and investors to the Goyim. He went bankrupt seven times. Millions, well, thousands of people, thousands of investors, thousands of bankers lost billions of dollars because Donald Trump filed bankruptcy and would not pay back the loans and the investments that were made to him by Gentiles. And guess what? Every single time Trump was bailed out of these bankruptcies by his fellow Chabadists. Donald Trump is a Chabadist. Ivanka is a Chabadist. Jared is a Chabadist. And they are practicing the religion of Chabadism. Side note, to my good Catholic friends who are watching, you need to understand, the Vatican strongly supports the Noahide laws. Your Vatican is a New World Order, globalist, corrupt, Noahide organization in bed with the Chabadist in Israel. You need to come, I, you know, many of us have had to do some deep soul searching about the church that we attended and the doctrines of those churches that we attended and the fallacy of it and the error of it. And we came to a conviction through the study of scriptures that those churches and those doctrines were wrong. I appeal to my good Catholic friends who are watching me right now. You need to do the same thing about your church. You need to stop blindly following everything they tell you and study the scriptures for yourself to see whether those things are so. And come to an honest, independent conviction of thus saith the Lord and not thus saith the Pope. The Vatican is strongly in support of the Noahide laws. All right, let me give you a little summary at this point. Number one. Noahide laws are Jewish laws that apply to all non-Jews of the world which forbid forms of worship not approved by Judaism, blasphemy of the Jewish God, sex relations which are not approved by the Jewish religion, and that non-Jews must set up courts to enforce these laws. Number two, American Public Law 102-14 states that these laws are the foundation of American civilization. Not true, not true, not true. Reformation theology and natural law formed the foundation of the American civilization. Amen. This is what we've learned. 
American Public Law 102-14 states that these laws are the foundation of American civilization, that it is our responsibility to transmit them to the next generation. And every president since Jimmy Carter has signed an international scroll along with the other heads of state pledging to use education to put the world under Noahide laws. Number three, Jewish legal groups who advocate for Noahide laws are promoting capital punishment laws that comply with the Talmudic form of execution, namely decapitation, be established. I have seen the documented reports that state that the federal government is amassing and storing tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, how many, no one knows, guillotines in Georgia. Why would our federal government be making and storing guillotines. Number four, there are non-Jews, including Christian Zionists, who are willingly complying with this agenda. And they are working with the nascent Sanhedrin in Israel to promote the Noahide laws. Let's be clear. Pastors, Christians, and churches, I don't care what brand, I don't care what name, that support Zionism, Chabadism, Talmudism are blaspheming Almighty God by supporting an antichrist agenda that attempts to do the following. Number one, deny the deity, messiahship, and saviorhood of Jesus Christ. Everything we've read and everything you will read about this subject is a blatant denial of Jesus Christ as the Messiah of Israel and Savior of the world. It is a blatant assault against the Lord Jesus Christ, his work on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, by trying to suggest that there is another Messiah yet to come, there is another Savior besides him, a faith that is not founded on him. Number two, deny the completed work on the cross for our sins. Number three, deny the new covenant, the body of Christ, the church, in this faith system, if you want to call it that, this false faith system, this antichrist system. There is no such thing as the new covenant. There is no such thing as the body of Christ. There is no such thing as the church. In fact, all those things are considered antithetical to their belief system. Number four, deny the New Testament doctrine of grace. They are trying to create a Jewish system of works, salvation, totally denying the truth of the New Testament scripture that we are saved by grace through faith minus and plus nothing. Yeah. And to establish one, a global Talmudic order. Number two, the enforcement of Talmudic law by capital punishment. Number three, a global religion of work salvation based upon Talmudic law. And number four, a global political union based upon the doctrines of Zionism. I hear these Christian preachers and book authors and radio broadcasters and TV preachers constantly fear-mongering about Sharia law to the churches. Sharia law is coming, Sharia law, Sharia law, Sharia law. Let me tell you something, our U.S. Congress has not codified Sharia law into the laws of our nation, but they have codified Talmudic law into the laws of our country. We have much more to fear from Talmudism than we do Islam. Here again, Christ's words 
to the Sanhedrin in John chapter 8. To the Sanhedrin, Jesus said, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Verse 45, he said to the Sanhedrins, And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Verse 47, he said to the Sanhedrin, He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. He said to the Sanhedrin, in verse 32, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Truth, the truth is the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life, he said. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When we talk about truth, we're talking about the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're talking about a virgin born Christ. We're talking about a sinless Christ. We're talking about the law-fulfilling Christ. We're talking about the crucified Christ. We're talking about the resurrected Christ. We're talking about the, Christ, the church's Christ. We're talking about the coming Christ. Not an amalgamated mixture of Jesus and Moses, law and grace, church and Israel, faith and works. We're talking about Jesus and Jesus only. Faith and faith only. The new Jerusalem and the new Jerusalem only. Let's stand for a word of prayer.